Hi everyone, I'm Caroline, Film Club Young Reporter and welcome to your Tuesday Film Club webcast. Hi, and I'm Sophie from the schools team here at Film Club. And at first I just want to say a big hi to all the schools that are listening today. Um, Islington Arts and Media School, James Binley School, Catmouse College, Aldenham School and Mayfield School and one more, Castle Rock School. So hello to all of you. Hi guys. And just a quick reminder, if you want to send in any questions to Nick or to our other guest Michaela during the webcast, you can email, Twitter or text. And along the bottom now there should be a little rolling sign of, of all of those details. So over to you Caroline. Yeah, um, today we're looking at the topic of modern day slavery. Um, it's a really gripping and challenging issue which we should all be aware of. Um, with us in the studio today we have Michaela Alfred Kamara from the Anti-Slavery Organisation. Hi Michaela. Hello. And also we have celebrated filmmaker Nick Broomfield who's coming to us via Skype live from Los Angeles. <laughs> Hi Nick, well thanks so much anyway, I know you're really busy out there in LA and um, you're in the middle of shooting your most recent film so thanks very much for coming to speak to us here at Film Club. Um, firstly I just wanted to kick off with just asking you why you decided to choose the subject of, of this true story of the Chinese cockle pickers death in Morecambe Bay for your film Ghosts. Well, I, I you know, at the time when it happened, and thinking, what are all these Chinese doing in Morecambe Bay, and what's the story behind this? And then I just started doing a little bit of research. There's a great uh, journalist called Xia Hongpei who w writes for The Guardian, and I read some of her articles, and I realized that there's this whole kind of hidden secret world in England that we don't know about, you know, where people are um, working in terrible conditions, slavery really and I thought well slavery was finished like 200 years ago you know what's happening and uh, I was amazed to discover that there is modern day slavery and you have people in England who are working for the supermarkets people like Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda uh, in their butcheries picking vegetables and that kind of thing who are living in terrible conditions and being paid nothing and somehow this is able to go on and that's really why I did Ghosts and what it's about. Brilliant. Um, sorry, Caroline's just got a question. But before that, I just want to say we've lost your picture for the moment, Nick, but we can hear you. So we're going to continue and hopefully we'll get you back. OK, so that's just for you all out there as well, schools. Please bear with us. <laughs> Um, so slavery seems like such an old-fashioned um, historical term. Michaela, how is modern-day slavery different from how we view, you know, those pictures of chained men travelling from Africa to Europe and America? How is it different? Um, in that people aren't necessarily chained today. Um, so slavery does take place around the world, and as Nick has mentioned, the situation of Chinese cockle pickers being trafficked into the UK and forced to work. So slavery today affects people irrespective of what they skin colour is and where they're from. We have slavery all over the world, including in the UK, and not just affecting people from outside of the UK. There are people born and bred in the UK who can find themselves in slavery situations. And so it's not necessarily someone owning a person or a person mm. being born into slavery. It's people being tricked or deceived, promised a job, and when they get to that job, those conditions they've been promised don't exist and they're forced to work in a situation they've not agreed to work in. Okay, thanks. Well, Nick, this is to you, and Michaela's kind of maybe partly answered it, but um, Ghost, to me, is a film about human trafficking, which, um, you, know, you know, do you agree with that? And also, how does that tie into slavery? But I think you've answered that a bit, but can you maybe explain a bit more when you were talking about the fact that you weren't aware of these issues before? Well, I didn't realise that uh, people trafficking, I think next to uh, arms the arms trade and drugs is the most profitable industry in the world today. And you have a lot of people from, from third world countries or places like China, where it's very difficult, especially for people living in rural China, in the countryside, to make a living, who actually get smuggled from China. And, then, and not, it's, modern slavery is very different, which is often these people pay. They pay gangs to smuggle them to England. It might cost somebody £15,000, for example, to be smuggled to England. And that's what we see at the beginning of Ghost. We see 
um, our ling being being smuggled to uh, the UK in the back of trucks and stuff, and she's mm. paid fifteen thousand pounds for that, and she then is what's called indebted. She owes that money to the gang and to the money lenders, and her family back in China are held ransom until that money's paid off. So until that money's paid off, she'll literally have to do anything to make a regular income to send it back every week. And that's one of the conditions of, of slavery, really, which is that they have a debt. Mm. And sometimes this debt never gets paid off. And as you said, um, as you've shown in the film, Iquin is smuggled from rural China to the UK. And we actually have a clip of that now from Nick's film Ghosts, which is about the tragedy of 23 Chinese cockle pickers who actually drowned in Morecambe Bay. And we have this clip now of where Iquin is smuggled from rural China to the UK. <laughs> Come 我们是接人的老实点什么过来了我们是接人的老实点啊 Hi guys, sorry about that, we just had a few technical difficulties, but we're back now, it's fine. Um, we have actually had um, a question for you, Nick, from Hazim the Guna on Twitter, who has a really interesting question, actually. Why is the film called Go Ghosts? Why did you call it Ghosts? Well, it's, it's actually uh, from a Chinese phrase called Guailo, which is what they call us. They call us ghosts. Um, so it's what the Chinese feel when they come to England, which is they look around and they see all these, you know, ghosts in a culture that they can't relate to, uh, and all these sort of, yeah, I guess they, 
they, you know, suddenly being in white England, white Anglo-Saxon England, you know, that's what they, that's how they see us as ghosts. It's almost, Guaylo is also a kind of slightly derogatory uh, way of describing us. And I wanted the film very much to be from their point of view. I wanted it to be how it is for them to arrive in this country and try and make sense of it. So it's very much told from the point of view of this woman, Ai Ching, who has a child back in China, um, but comes here to make money to support her family. And they would talk about the English as ghosts, so that's why I called it that. Oh, okay, well, well, that's excellent and great question there. Um, we actually have questions today from students at Islington Arts and Media School. Hi, guys. And the first one from Emin is relevant to the clip we have just shown, and this is for you, Nick, again. Um, did you uh, have any hesitation when filming the scene where um, people were smuggled in boxes? Were there any difficulties there? Um, no, I mean, I think it was pretty... It was a very claustrophobic experience mm -hmm. for Ai Ching and the others to go through that. And, of course, we all remember the 40 or 50 Chinese who all suffocated in the back of a container truck mm -hmm. because there wasn't enough ventilation. So, I mean, there is a very real danger uh, in traveling in boxes for long journeys in the backs of trucks or on uh, ocean liners and stuff to cross the channel. Um, and I remember everyone, you know, really gasping for breath by the time they got out of the box. So, you know, we filmed things in a very real way, but I don't think we ever really risked anything. The only, the only really uh, big confrontation and danger we had in the film was actually when we were filming at Morecambe Bay the same cocklers who had actually, or the same British cocklers who had actually beaten up the Chinese when they were there all those years ago, came and threatened us when we were making the film. And you're all kind oh, of wow. five miles out on the sand, so there aren't any police around or anybody to help you. And it was very frightening. Oh, that is shocking. Um, I actually watched the making of, and I watched the whole of that, and it was actually, it looked like a very scary situation. They weren't happy about you guys being there, were you? Were they? No, and, uh, you know, they're very territorial. Um, the Chinese were incredible workers, actually. They were much better than the British. They, they worked faster and they were much cleaner and very hard working. So they were a threat. And um, there was all this kind of rivalry between gangs, uh, which was very unfortunate. People wanted to employ the Chinese, um, and people resented that. Um, and... Uh, there was, you know, there's just the normal kind of racism, I think, which exists uh, very strongly today. Yep. Mm. And um, we've got a question for Michaela now. Um, Michaela, it looked to me as if Ai Ching, the girl who's being trafficked, came to the UK voluntarily. So why does this still end up being a story about slavery if she came voluntarily? It's really important in how slavery works today, especially in trafficking. In that trafficking, you can be tricked or coerced into a condition. So even though you may offer yourself voluntarily, as Nick said, some of these Chinese cockle pickers have actually paid money to come to this country to be brought here to work. Even though they've volunteered into that, it's the end exploitation that makes it slavery. The fact that when they end up in these conditions, they're forced to do work that is really dangerous and hazardous to their health, and they can't leave that situation because, as Nick has mentioned, because of threats to their families back home. And so um, it becomes slavery when there's a force at the end and people can't leave that situation, even though they may have volunteered to come and work in a particular condition um, but in many instances they actually deceive as to what that condition is going to be like. And uh, we have another question for you for, from Mohammed who wanted to know, and this is an excellent question Mohammed, um, if migrant workers help us out then why are they treated so badly? Um, I think that is one of the best questions I've heard around um, slavery issues and Nick has alluded to this already in terms mm. of issues around racism, around discrimination. And when it comes to trafficking, especially trafficking from other countries, trafficking isn't always from other countries, but trafficking of people from other countries who are mainly migrant workers looking for a job, 
most people would not choose to come to a country like the UK to work in cockle picking, to work in agriculture, growing leeks or tomatoes for Tesco's or Waitrose, etc. Most people wouldn't um, choose to come to a country if those jobs are not available. So people are coming here because we need them to do that work. And so um, why are they treated so badly is because we don't have laws implemented. Mm. We do have laws to protect people who have been trafficked and exploited, but if they're not being implemented enough, i.e. if the government isn't putting enough resources for people to inspect these situations, then people are very vulnerable to that situation continuing. I know after the FIMNIC, um, the Gang Masters Licensing Authority was formed, and that was in reaction to the Morgan Bay disaster, and that's supposed to look into um, giving license licenses um, to people who work in the um, agriculture field in the fisheries industry so that they're not using trafficked people in mm. that work. And also so that they're not, you know, there's something about irregular workers yeah. and the fact that mm -hmm. irregular workers and Nick, that was brought up in the making of Ghosts as well, mm -hmm. I saw, mm -hmm. um, of them having actually no working rights at all. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to move on to probably the clip, the second clip yep. now, Nick and Michaela. Definitely. Um, we have another clip from Nick's film Ghosts. And in this clip, it's interesting to you, like what we were talking about, how easily I Ching can be manipulated. Yeah, 这就是那么回事Okay, um, Nick, just a, a last question um, to you. Why do you think that people maybe take so much risks um, to travel to England the way that the Chinese cockle pickers and I Ching did? Because I think um, in places like rural China and many other places uh, in the world, people are living in such poverty now, and particularly in a lot of the old communist countries where people were originally supported by the state in some way, um, this kind of new form of capitalism, um, which is very much sort of man eat man kind of, you know, you, you're either getting paid a lot of money or you're getting paid nothing and there's no subsidies, there's no health care, there's n nothing. And in places like uh, China, for example, there used to be a national health system, there used to be free schooling, all of that is gone now. So people are literally forced to come to the markets where they can make money. And in rural China now, in villages and towns there, there are only very old people or, you know, literally babies that are being looked after by the grandparents. And all the parents have had to go to industrial centers all over the world to, to make money in order to support their families back in China. So this is a very real problem, and it happens you know, in South America and Africa and so on. People are really forced to come to the industrialized West in order to make money to send it back home. Otherwise, their families would literally starve. Mm. OK, I think we're running out of time, so I think we've probably got one more question, and then we're going to wrap it up. So 
Yeah, and I think that question we just had was from Joe, and this is also from Alden and Film Club, and this is for you, Michaela, and I think this uh, is relevant to what we've been talking about. How do you think students can get involved in helping to stop modern-day slavery? Because obviously that's very important. Okay. Um, thank you for that question. Um, really important question again. And we often feel, feel powerless. You know, it's such a big situation. What can we, as little people, do about this? Um, the fact is there's a lot that we can do. Um, essentially, decision Decision makers, i.e. the government, members of parliament, members of the European Parliament, have to listen to us. Um, as young people, we don't get to, um, you don't get to vote yet, but you are the people who will be voting in a few years' time, in a couple, three, four years' time. And so they have to start listening to you from now. If you write letters to decision makers saying, what laws are you implementing to protect trafficked people? How are you making sure that there's protection for children who have been trafficked into domestic work in the UK? Children from Vietnam who have been trafficked to grow cannabis in people's homes in the UK. How are you protecting them? Um, we want you to protect them. An MP said if he gets three letters from constituents on the same issue, he thinks that there's a conspiracy. Okay. So he has to take action on that. So there's writing letters. There's Just writing a couple letters. more points and yes. probably because we're okay. running out of and time. Also, um, what, what you buy. Again, you're the ones mm. who give companies their profits. So writing letters to those companies, we don't necessarily say boycott things, because if you're boycotting, the companies don't know why you're boycotting. But if you're writing letters to them, asking them what steps they're taking to make sure that um, if, you, if you eat cockles, for example, that your cockles aren't coming from trafficked people. If you're eating leeks, that those people picking the leeks in the fields of Kent, of Lincolnshire, haven't been trafficked. If you're wearing clothes, um, that the cotton hasn't been grown um, in Uzbekistan, which uses forced child labour. So asking those questions to companies. And keep writing, just keep writing and tell other people as well. The more that people know about this, the more people can take action um, to end this. So you all have a really important big role to play as young people. Brilliant. So keep writing letters everyone out there and maybe doing something in school like holding a screening to raise awareness around some of the issues mm. discussed today. And uh, if you do want further information on our Slavery Unlock topic then we do have a resource pack which is on the Film Club website available for you to download. Um, so I guess we want to say thank you to Nick. Thank you so much for taking time to come and talk to us. It's been really interesting um, hearing about the process of filming Ghosts and I really recommend Film Clubbers to watch that because it's very shocking, but also um, interesting. Yeah. So film. thank you, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with filming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next time, hopefully, we'll see. Seeing you, and those were great questions. They were great questions. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, and good luck with your filming as well. We look forward to the uh, latest film. Thank you. I need it. <laughs> Bye. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, and also thank you to Michaela, um, thank you for coming in and shedding some light on modern day slavery. It's been really, really insightful and interesting. And obviously um, find out what you can do to help out. And um, thank you very much and please remember to tune in tomorrow at 4pm. We've got uh, David Nichols, who's a screenwriter for the latest adaptation of Great Expectations. 4pm tomorrow, look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Bye.